Hello everybody and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is my new video series where I'm going to be covering all the latest and greatest new features from the Microsoft Data Platform on some really short concise uh, video demos. Uh, this is episode 1, installing SQL Server 2016 CTP 2.3. My name is Warner Chavez, I'm a SQL Server MCM and MVP with Pythian. Make sure to check our website as well at pythian.com. So let's go over the current status of where the uh, release cycle of SQL Server 2016 is right now. So this is the latest release that I'm going to be installing today. This is CTP 2.3, released on September 2nd, 2015. Something interesting that we have to remember is that SQL Server Management Studio is going to be an auto band release compared to the SQL Server on the box main engine release. What this means is that on the actual SQL Server installation, there's going to be a release of Management Studio put into it so that you have it available on like the media, but the team is going to continue releasing updates to Management Studio even after uh, SQL Server 2016 has been shipped. So that's what it means but, uh, by saying that Management Studio is now out of band. It means we are going to continuously receive updates for Management Studio even though the main core engine might remain uh, the same. There's no formal release date yet for SQL Server 2016 other than the obvious that it's going to be in 2016, but further than that, uh, we don't really know yet exactly in what uh, date is going to be the release next year. Um, something else to consider while you're playing around with these community technology previews is that not all the release uh, features are in the product yet, and as well, some of the new features that are in the CTP might not work exactly the same uh, once they make it all the way to release, right? There's a round of feedback that Microsoft collects now with these CTPs. There will likely be some release candidates as well, and then uh, there might be changes until we actually see the full-blown RTM release of SQL Server 2020. All right, so let's uh, just jump into the video. Let's go through the installation for SQL Server 2016 CTP 2.3. All right, so this is the splash screen. As you can see, it's very similar to what we're used to. And we're just going to go through the installation of a standalone instance for this case. Again, very similar to the previous screens. They haven't really done a big overhaul of this one. Just going to leave it here as my evaluation copy. Obviously, it's a CTP. I don't have a product key for it. And in this case, I usually turn off the telemetry for production releases. But since it's the CTP, I'm willing to give Microsoft the data and accept the license. Let's keep going through. And the uh, updates, I'm not going to check it. Obviously, this depends on your organization. For CTP, just to play around, you can just leave it unchecked. All right, so we passed all the validation. Ready to go. And we're going to pick each uh, feature that we want individually. I don't want just anything, uh, just you know everything, uh, the big all features install. So I'm going to pick the stuff that I really want. Um, on a uh, classic standalone instance, usually what I'll pick is the engine, uh, replication, analysis services, reporting services, integration services, and management studio, which is uh, what I'm doing right here. Uh, like I mentioned previously on the slides, management studio is now going to be an out of band release, but there is a version that comes with the media. So I'm just going to go ahead and install that right now anyway. Do a quick review and let's go. Go and press next. Okay, at this point we just have the choice of default or named. I'm just going to leave it as a default. Here we can set up some specific service accounts if we want. Uh, by default, it'll just use uh, an NT service account. Uh, don't uh, forget to change your collation if you're not going to use the default. Otherwise, um, that's a pain to change after the fact. Just keep going with next. I'm going to add myself as the admin. Uh, by default, it only sets up Windows authentication, which is recommended, uh, and not set up SQL logins unless you really, really need it. Data directories, now this is where you would set the different uh, storage paths and drives that you have in your server. So you can see here, it's pretty cool, now we have a counter for how many TempDB files we want. And by default, the installer is going to set the number to the amount of cores in your machine up to a number of 8. And you can enable file stream if you wanted to. If everything looks good, go next. 
and here you can pick your uh, installation setup for uh, analysis services if you're going to use multidimensional tabular don't forget to add yourself as an admin so you can have access to it and also if you need to pick any of the other different drives in the server this is where you would set them up okay and now we have reporting services I usually do the install only and then do the configuration after the fact so I'm just going to pick that and at this point we're ready to start the installation okay so we're back from the installation it completed successfully now we are have to do a restart is what is the installer is asking us but other than that we have no other issues everything seems to have succeeded so let's just proceed uh, with the installation uh, by doing the restart and then checking everything back once we come back uh, from the reboot okay so we're back from the restart and let's just uh, look up management studio and do a quick verification of uh, the version so let's load up a management studio and here we go so you can see it's CTP2 uh, specified there and just connect as my default instance as well and uh, we'll just do a quick uh, select uh, at, at uh, version just to verify that we are on the version that uh, we wanted and there we go we can see we have Microsoft SQL Server 2016 CTP 2.3 uh, ready to uh, just be worked on and played around with and that's pretty much it for the installation alright let's go back to do a quick recap alright so that was the installation of CTP 2.3 it's nothing too complicated it's nothing really that new It's the same uh, familiar interface that you're used to if you've been doing your SQL Server installations years past uh, as always we have to be um, mindful of the best practices that are still applied to installing the product uh, make sure that you only pick the services that you really want to work on uh, you don't have to bloat the installation with services that you're not going to use uh, make sure that obviously you set up the proper uh, storage and folders and paths that you want to use that are the standard in your organization um, and obviously uh, as well uh, the collation is for example is very important uh, to pick properly from the very beginning too. Uh, something kind of new that is really cool is the new recommendation that the installer gives you for TEMDB so it's gonna look at how many cores your system has and then recommend to have that many files up to eight uh, and this is gonna be really useful just to you know prevent people from getting bit um, by the issue of just having one TempDB file after installation. Um, so that was for uh, episode one for today. Uh, I hope it was uh, just a quick, uh, useful view into how SQL Server 2016 is progressing on the installation front. Um, next episodes, I'm going to be exploring some of the new features coming out uh, with SQL 2016, some of the new stuff coming out with Azure SQL Database, and some of the other stuff uh, happening in the Microsoft Data Platform. So uh, stay tuned and see you on the next one.